I know it's an interim belt, and there's always a little asterisk with that, but it's still a UFC belt. So I just wonder what the excitement level is like for you right now ahead of this moment. Yeah, I saw Figgy was saying this is a cardboard belt, it's a plastic belt, but it's still a world title, and um, i got to respect that, and this is everything I work towards. So he's not here, I'm here, I'm staring, uh, squaring off against Brandon, and um, we get to run it back, so I'm excited. Um, I mean, obviously you've been talented throughout your entire run, but these last three fights especially, I mean, you've just looked absolutely phenomenal. Um, is there something different, uh, a key that you can point on and say, like, this is what clicked to get me in this current form? I've said it in the Cody Garbrandt lead up fight where I was saying I, I stopped chasing that I stopped chasing the becoming the champion and started believing it and I feel like that's that's definitely what you're seeing. What you're seeing in the cage is just a product of the hard that work that we're putting in at City Kickboxing. I train with world champions day in and day out. Alex, Izzy, I know what it takes. I know the mindset they have and uh it's about having high standards. Ticking off all the boxes and um that I've done that this in my, uh, my last few fights, and uh, for this fight, you know, I've taken no shortcuts. I'm ready to go wherever this fight goes. It's a five-round fight, my first one, um, but, you know, I, I'm at this stage where it doesn't even matter who I'm fighting. Brandon Figueroa, it's not about that. It's a battle of yourself, and um, I'm just more than ready to become a world champion. Is this a fight that you either, A, like, knew you'd see this guy again, or B, like, really wanted to see this guy again? I mean, is this a fight you needed to have back? Yeah, it's a, it's a fight that I, I always wanted to run it back. And um, it's all about timing. The Kai that fought Brandon back in the 2019 isn't the same Kai that's fighting him this Saturday. Uh, just some completely different head, different headspace. You know, being a father now, being a husband, going through more experiences, um, and just leveling up everywhere. Um, and I feel like the self belief is the difference now. Before I didn't really believe it. Now, you know, I, I truly believe I'm going to be a world champion, and that just comes from. The training, the preparation, who I surround myself with, home life, balancing all of that, and um, just having fun while I'm doing it. So um, when you're doing all of those things, that's when great things happen. So, um, you know, I'm not naive. I know Brandon's done well since that fight, you know, and that gave me a lot of confidence as well, knowing that after our fight, he went on to win a world title. So it just reassured me I'm fighting the best guys in the world. Um, but he's had his time. He's had a taste of being a UFC world champion, and uh, now it's my time. So, you know, beating former world champions, beating guys that have never lost before, you're seeing this evolution in my game, and uh, you're seeing that confidence. And I've got the momentum, and uh, I plan on, you know, walking into hostile territory Saturday night. You know, this is close to Mexico, being in Texas, and Dallas, Texas. So I welcome it. I, I want to feed off that energy. I love um, that pressure. and I, That's where I thrive. So I can't wait to get my hand raised come Saturday. You want to take it personal when you get booed? I don't take it personal. I welcome it. You know, boo me. Want to see me lose. I thrive in that. That's what my opponents did. That was their downfall when they overlooked me, underestimated me, and um, counted me out. And uh, I'll never count myself out. I'm always in a fight. Even if I'm breathing, I'm still in it. And um, I know everyone back home in New Zealand and Australia are going to be watching this, and uh, they're going to be tuning in. And uh, I plan on being, a, being, being the next or the third world title holder at City Kickboxing. You mentioned your teammates, obviously, the championship level experience. Is there one piece of advice or one thing that they told you that stuck with you the most of, like, how to handle this week? Yeah, like, I've seen, obviously, them do fight week and defend their belts many times before. So I knew what was to come, you know, more more, uh, more media obligations, more attention, more um, people wanting you. Um, so I expected it. It's nothing overwhelming for me. It's something that, um, you know, I, I've kind of prepared for. So, um st- the one thing I've taken away from Izzy and Alex is they never count themselves out. They never doubt themselves, and they've always got the self-belief that um, is why they're defending their belts for a very long time. And I feel like that's the key here, where um, that, that that belief is everything. And um, having you know Eugene in my corner, where he's done this many times before, having that calm voice in your head, uh, in your ear, telling you exactly what you need to hear, um, I feel like it's great timing. You know, look what we've done in the last two years in this pandemic. You know, had to quarantine every time, had to do MIQ, didn't have coaches in my corner. So I didn't have the ideal situation and lead-ups, but look what we've been able to do. So now everything's back to normal, even even playing field. And, um, yeah, I'm just ready for everything. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm peaking at the right time. I'm in my prime of my career, and it's my time. I'm curious what they've told you, whether it be coaches, whether it be teammates, about like this moment. Like In one way, you want to treat it like it's any other fight, right? Like You just want to do what you always do. But on the other hand, you're fighting for a UFC world title. I mean, you kind of want to embrace the special moment, right? So what have they told you in terms of finding that balance? I feel like um, the big thing here is just stay present, stay in the moment. 
um, soak everything in. Enjoy the enjoy the process. Don't let it just um, don't just try get through it. You know, just enjoy it, and that's when you're at your best when you're actually having fun and and um, you're not looking at the end result. You're just looking what's in front of you and and taking it as that. So you're seeing that in my fights where I'm a lot more composed. I'm a lot more. Um, I guess Zen and um, in the moment I see everything happening everything's kind of in slow-mo in my head and um, that's just the evolution that um, I've come from in the sport through the highs and lows ups and downs uh, but we keep turning up and here, here we are now a few days out from fighting for a world title Love it. last thing for me obviously you clearly can't look past this this weekend but you win the title does it immediately become important that you do see Devison next or is it like hey if he still wants to hang out on the sidelines I'll just keep defending this cardboard belt you know <laughs> Well, he's going to be there Saturday night, so he can sit back, enjoy, eat his popcorn, hopefully not put on too much weight, because uh, once I get past Brandon, I'd love to square off against him. I know it's going to happen. I know um, well, he, he's injured at the moment, but I'd love to do it on my side of the world in Australia or New Zealand. I know Alex is pushing for a fight there, and um, you know, I'd love to share a card with my teammates and um, do it in front of my friends and family. Uh, well, the last few years, we've had to travel and, and um, do it in hostile territory, so... Obviously, not looking past Brandon, but that's how I see things happening. So, Figueroa can wait, even though, though this is a cardboard or plastic belt, um, it's still a world title, and he's not here. You know, he didn't turn up, and um, you could just sit back and enjoy the show. Right, over here. We just had Anthony Smith in here, and he was saying that he doesn't quite understand when fighters say they have to change their camp to prepare for a five round fight rather than a three round because it's not like their lungs are getting any bigger or stuff like that. So I'm curious if you're in the same mindset or if you actually did change up this camp to prepare for a five rounder. No, so the, what we do at City Kickboxing, Eugene's already come up with a system to prepare us for five round fights already. And he told me this before I started my camp. So when I was in my camp, I was like, so do you want me to do extra hills, extra sprints, um, extra conditioning? And he's like, our system is actually set up for you to fight um, world for world titles. So that's the kind of caliber of um, you know team that I have around me that have already been preparing me for years of what was to come so now that we're here we haven't really changed any system we haven't had to go to any new camp haven't brought in any new coaches we've had alex come over which is awesome and feeding off their energy um so there's something special that's happening at the gym at city kickboxing and just being there and i didn't go to vegas i could have gone but i i wanted to put my best foot forward and i didn't go over and support alex and izzy in their fights because i've got my own title to win i've got my own belt to win so um, I got to respect that, and now we're here fight week, full confidence. You know, not having to play catch up. My weight's good, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, peaking it all at the right time. So I'm just focused, dialed in, and ready to win a world title. Well, on the flip side of that, saying you didn't change anything at camp, Alex. I mean, uh, Brandon has changed his camp completely. Now he's in Kansas City. Uh, are you expecting a different fighter, or is it, is it like something like Tyson Fury once said, where during the fight you always just kind of fall back into what you what got you to the dance to begin with? Yeah, he can change up his camps and get new looks and new coaches. Um, you know, I just wanted to bring his best version. I feel like I was a bit disrespected uh, in the Cody Garbrandt fight when people were saying, you know, look how washed up Cody looks. Anyone can beat him, but it's because I made it look that easy. Every target, every shot that I landed was on the target. Every, um, yeah, everything that I did in that fight was picture perfect. And when you really break down what I did in that fight, um, then you can actually appreciate it. So come Saturday night, I'm going to show that I'm on another level. I'm going to show that it doesn't matter if you're training at a new camp. You can bring in whoever you want. It doesn't even matter who I'm fighting. I just believe that I'm going to be the best. I believe I'm going to be a world champion, and um, that's just how confident I am. Hey, Kai. Yep. Um, back in the first fight, uh, kind of in the later rounds, like Brandon like really started feeling himself. Like He was kind of flexing and doing a little bit of yelling. Do you remember that part, and like, did that kind of like get under your skin at all? Yeah, I feel like um, I'm not making any excuses. That fight, um, the weight cut was an issue for me. Um, so my legs weren't there in that fight. And I feel like when he was doing all of that, I wanted to um, fire back and push more. But my body just wasn't wasn't um, reacting like it, like it usually would be. So like I said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm a different. Um, all the antics, all the um, all the stuff that doesn't actually matter, uh, I'll be pointing to the ground and saying, let's swing. I'm not moving. I'm not taking a back step. And this is the people's main event. I feel like people are really sleeping on this fight that um, don't really watch the flyweights. But we're in this co-main event for, for a reason. Um, we both come to fight. And uh, I feel like it's going to be a dog fight. So if this goes five rounds, a bloody back and forth war, um, I'm ready to take it there. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like you can't really go back on that fight and say 
it's going to be the same because it's not. We're not on the same level. And, you know, he's gone on to win the belt, so he's got that confidence. He's had a taste of gold. And um, where I'm at in my career, it's all about momentum. And I'm on a three-fight win streak beating guys that are best in the world. And um, that's what I'm going to show on Saturday night. Uh, Kai over here. Uh, Pantoja has been making a lot of noise, wanting an interim title fight. You know, he's beat both you and Moreno in a tough house before. Uh, what do you make of his campaign to get a title shot? Pantoja, yeah, he's he's definitely, um, I guess, one of the top guys in this division. But his downfall is he, you can't wait to get a title shot. You got to go out there and show why you deserve it, and that's what I did. Everyone, no one wanted to fight Askar Askarov. Ask everyone in that top five. Everyone was avoiding that fight. After the Cody fight, they asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I want to fight someone in that top five. I'm not going to sit around and just wait on a win. Um, that's not going to do anything. That Cody wasn't ranked. I have to beat someone in this top five. And they gave me the toughest matchup, someone that I stylistically is the worst matchup, someone that should have won. And um, that fueled my fire. I was in there to prove a point and um, show how, how far I've come. And um, that's what I did. I, I, I went out there and showed why I'm the next contender. My, my actions are my loudest voice, not my talking. So um, that's why I'm in the position I, I, I'm in. I've earned this. I've, I've put myself in this position. I haven't just waited and conveniently got this spot. It's, it's come from hard work. So that's the difference. Maybe Pantoja should uh, take some notes. Uh, you mentioned that you guys have got so to your right. You got some something special going at the gym down there. How cool is it to have Israel and Alex coming to watch you and support you this week? Yeah, you know that's just the type of team we are. It's like family. You know, there. I was in their camps. You know, at the, um, they fought in the middle of my middle of my camp, and I, I've seen the hard work that they've put in. I've seen what they've had to do over the years to retain their titles, fighting the best guys in the world. And um, when they found out I was having world title fight and um they said hands down we'll be there um we w won't be there for the whole week but we'll definitely be there for the fight so um it'll be awesome to be have them you know ringside appreciating my work and uh that's what it's all about just showing up for each other um you know when the team is away other teammates step up and give their bodies to help you and that's just how it is so um you know, we're the, we're, we're the best gym in the world, City Kickboxing, coached by Eugene Behrman, and uh, we're about to get a third world title. And, you know, if you look at the work that you guys have done, Israel and Alex especially, um, do you think it's about time that you guys are able to demand, okay, look, we had to go through all this to fight during COVID. We had to come up to all these places. Now it's time that collectively as a team we are able to demand you guys come down here. Oh, definitely. Look at this wave that the Anzacs are having right now. Not just our gym at City Kickboxing, but Taito Uvasa, Jake Matthews, Josh Kulabau, um, Jamie Malaki. You know, all these guys are putting on absolute um, clinics in their fights. And um, it's about time the UFC come back down and reward everyone for um, for what they're doing and give the people what they want to see. You know, we, we really miss it back there. Um, and it would really pick everyone up and, and give them something to be um, look forward to. So, yeah, we definitely want to event back in New Zealand or Australia. You know, Marvel Stadium can fit 60,000. You know, imagine Izzy headlining, Alex headlining, and then me headlining. Um, with, like, all three of us headlining that card at Marvel Stadium. We could pack it out straight away. It would just be a sellout, and it would be awesome to bring that first event back um, like that with a, with a big splash. So... Um, it's definitely a movement right now. It's something I've been saying for years, um, but uh, now I'm actually believing it. So that's the difference. Awesome. Thank you.